हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू डे थ्री ऑफ टाटा स्टील चेस 2022 वेल आई वाज सपोज्ड टू स्टार्ट द स्ट्रीम एट नाइन ओ क्लॉक बट आई डिसाइडेड लेट्स गेट इट रोलिंग बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ एक्शन इज हैपनिंग ऑन द बोर्ड देर आर मेनी मेनी एक्साइटिंग गेम्स टू बी विटनेस टूडे देर इज डूडा वर्सेज कार्लसन डूबो वर्सेज विदित we have van forest versus pragnananda anish versus mamed yarov uh, lot of interesting games in the masters and in the challengers as well we have arjun taking on daniel darda and ganguly playing against max warmer dam so a warm welcome to everyone in the chat <laughs> uh, i i just uh, made sure that you know uh, we are a little bit on time today a little bit earlier than time so let's get it rolling the first game that we want to see right now is vidit versus daniel dubo because this is a game between two contrasting styles dubo loves to play complicated chess vidit loves to play simple strong solid chess so let's get it rolling i hope you all are ready for a lovely session of chess learning analysis and much more get your books and pens ready get ready to answer a lot of learning here is going to happen so daniel dubov here playing with the white pieces opens the game with 1 e4 and with it responds back with e5 now with it is a very solid player he says i'm going to play solidly against dubov because you know guys there are two things in this world okay a little bit of time for an analogy so some people think that you always have to do something in order to bring about a change while some people think that you can just be and the world around you is changing so it will definitely impact things the same is the case with with it He's like Dubo is going to do things. I don't need to do. I just need to be solid and not make mistakes. And that's what happened. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, d3, bishop c5. So my first question for the day before we begin, you know, chess questions is, what is this opening called? What is this opening called? And guys, also do like the stream. Soumya Deep Bhattacharya, you are right. It's Italian Siddharth Ranadev. You also have JSK chess streamer Mudit Aritra Udaya Kiran. Absolutely, this is known as an Italian opening. Bishop c5, and now came the move c3. Now, you want to control the center at the same time. You don't want to play d4 too soon because then. he takes takes and plays bishop b4 check and the center is not very stable because black then attacks with d5 so with it went d6 bishop g5 now one of the things that this move bishop g5 does generally in the opening is that it pins this knight but if the black king has not castled black is not averse to pushing his pawn forward so let's see what with it does he first pushes the bishop and nudges it and like marna hai kya mai ko bishop is like no no i'm not going to take it and now you can take you can play g5 i believe it seems like a plausible move but with it first goes a5 now he gains some space on the queen side with this move a5 and also stops ideas of b4 his opponent now plays knight to a3 and this is not very common the move knight a3 is not played very often i believe we are going to check this on chess base and try to see how many times this has happened before so let me just get this on the chess base board but bish with it took with the bishop b a3 he has given up his bishop pair and in return has doubled the pawns of white so let's just quickly check how many times has this happened so i'm going to go to the chess base board and we're going to pull up this so if you look here this position has occurred 888 times h6 bishop h4 
A5 has just been played in 10 games. 189 games have continued with the move G5 in this position. But A5, and you can see Vidit himself has played A5 against Adiban. Ooh. Vidit versus Adiban. And this happened at Tata Steel Rapid. Oh, so maybe Dubov might have prepared with this. Come prepared. And here comes the Dubov novelty. Knight A3 has not been played ever in any game before. You know, with Dubov, it's like this guy is a machine filled with ideas. He's able to come up with new ideas every single time. I don't know how he does it, but Knight A3, his plan was that maybe his Knight can settle down on the B5 square here in this position, or it could go from C2 to E3. But when Vidit took B takes A3, and now all of a sudden you can see, by the way, Dubov's time, 1 hour 43 minutes, and with its time, 1 hour 17 minutes. What are the imbalances in this position? Now, all those who do not know imbalances, it's basically the differences in both sides. What is the difference between white's position and black's position according to you? Didn't Carlson play knight a3? Harshit Narayan says. No, maybe it was uh, Nepo who played knight a3 but in a slightly different position. I don't think he played bishop g5 and knight a3 both together. Asim Khan says weakness on c3. Yes, Asim, that is weak but it's not so easy to attack it. Although, let's say after something like d5, ed5, if I could take with the knight, then this could become weak. But doubled pawn, Savan Ghosh, you are right, Saswat Parida as well. Bishop versus Knight, White has the Bishop pair, Savita Chess, you are right. Black has space, maybe not, maybe not. Black does not have space as such. Don't you think that the pawn structure of White is broken up? A3 and A2 are doubled isolated pawns. At the same time, don't forget the open file, B file for white. Whenever there are doubled pawns, you get an open file to attack. So there are many imbalances here. And in a way, you can understand that Dubo would love to open up the position for his bishops. While Carlson, uh, while uh, Vidit would like to keep it closed. So Vidit went queen e7, short castles. And now, Vidit played something very interesting. Let's try to take some time and try, try to figure out what should black do in this position. It's the first question for the day. What do you think should black do in this position? And I think Vidit played this move. I mean, ah, there's a lot to be said about this next move that Vidit played. Bharat Goel says, are the double pawns really a liability? Now, Bharat, it depends, right, how you make use of the liability. Let's say you take a loan. Doubled pawns are like a loan. It's a liability, but you have the money at that point. Now, how do you utilize that money is very important. Do you put it and buy some good assets that will make you money? If yes, then that liability actually converted into assets, right? But if you are not going to make good use of it, you will have to pay the cost of it, you know, the interest on loan. So that is the point. Yeah, a double pawns are a liability, but you get something in return. You got the bishop pair, you got an open file. Okay, so many moves have been mentioned here. An Anik Mandal says, where is Amruta? Well, Amruta has some work to be done and would not be able to join today. But um, we will continue this. Okay, so let's just have a look at this. G5 is what many of you want to play. Well done. G5 is a good move. Piyush, Aniket, Abhimanyu, Parva, Jyotinjai, Mudit, Pranay, Pranju, Aditya, Mir. But Knight B8 was played in the game. Nilay, Chess, Priyank, Amitesh, Piyush, Parth, Mudit, Aman, Ekam Deol, Aditya Singh. Well done, guys. Knight B8. I couldn't believe. Like, Pele to. Tumara development nahi hai. You are not developed well. Right? 
you still have to castle your bishop is not developed your opponent is developed castled you know in the position and instead of you know trying to play something like g5 and stuff you go for knight b8 how surprising is this move and very very surprising i think what vidit wanted to do was he wanted to put his knight on d7 and control his other knight kind of defend it and then g5 he's not afraid of a sacrifice here it's a very slow move actually not c5 is never the idea here maybe it's just that he wants to perhaps put his pawn on c6 but even that not really he wants to play maybe bishop e6 and knight d7 let's look at it d4 by dubo and now knight b d7 ooh maybe he wants to play b6 and bishop b7 and then his development would be complete and this is a very typical idea guys don't forget it e4 e5 can anyone tell me which opening has this idea which variation in the ruy lopez has this idea can anyone tell me in the chat yes samvit kane you are right bishop e7 rook e1 b5 bishop b3 d6 c3 yeah and now uh, castles h3 and you are absolutely right it's the brayer lead nitrate Nil nilesh 105 some spellings are wrong but i get it i get your the see the point is knight a5 chigorin used to play chigorin great player used to attack this bishop and then the bishop would move away and then pawn would come to c5 and then everyone was like yeah nice space man this bishop can go here knight can come back excellent excellent but then everyone said but this knight is misplaced if only we could get this knight back to d7 that would be so nice and so in comes gula brayer and he says i will play knight b8 and everyone was like are you out of your mind why are you undeveloping he's like no not undeveloping i'm going to put my knight on d7 i'm going to defend my pawn on e5 i'll put my bishop here and later i can push my pawn up the board so brayer had this very very hyper modernist idea with knight b8 and this is kind of stuck in the structures you know this structure if you look at it isn't it the same structure that vidit is looking here at after knight b8 d4 knight d7 it's the same structure so vidit might not even know this opening if you look at his time he has used 43 minutes so he's not well versed with the opening line but still he managed to use ideas of one opening into another this is how chess is a lot about pattern recognition i hope you understand that so rook b1 then g5 was played now the point is that if knight g5 h g5 bishop g5 there is no longer a problem here because by the way uh, some of you are mentioning that you want to see what's happening on the live board uh, let me do something for you you know so that you don't feel like um, we are not but we will reach there in a bit but still i want to give you guys a good experience but then what happens many times on the live board you are able to see the move anyway let's let's do it um give me just a second so that i can fix it i'll do it in a very uh, quick way meanwhile guys how is everything going at your end i hope everything is good and that you are happy and that there are no exams and all that are going on for you okay done done yeah maybe that that helps or that doesn't help
okay so we'll make it a little smaller so that <laughs> pratik kavade says shaving kar lo please please main nahi dekh sakta ye stream if you don't shave i can't see it kar lunga pratik okay life is never easy says adarsh choudhary but good okay so g5 he went bishop g3 now with it said to himself look dubov i know that you are a great great attacker yeah you are a creative genius you can create great ideas on the board but i see a free pawn and not only is that pawn free my knight is not going to be kicked around because i can pick up your bishop dubov said okay i am attacking your knight anyway i am going to attack it here now with it took oh he didn't take he played f5 but guys if he would have taken here on g3 with which pawn would you recapture let me know in the chat at g3 or fg3 i'm going to use the chat chess moves mehmat amin thank you so much for your 4.99 try what is try what is try turkish maybe f f f yes try to write fg3 or hg3 so that the chat chess moves can pick up your move wow amazing so many people have come up with the move here but actually fg3 should picked up no i have no clue but so many people have said the move here and there is your bro namita panda arush kaushik jai maheshwari fg3 see generally guys you have to be taking it towards the center yeah like this when you take towards the center your pieces can control more squares which are more relevant but if you take this way now the bishop is looking here and also the rook is looking here and this could have been a very plausible way to play so but f5 played by vidit and now dubov took so dubov is trying to open up the position for his pieces now for vidit here if he would have taken here okay then dubo would have taken with the bishop pawn takes and here is a very powerful move for white let's see if you guys can find it white to play what do you do in this position white to play how do you continue can you find the move a brilliant brilliant move for white and one that with it would have been in big big trouble well rook e1 is not bad rook d1 is also not bad but there is something very very tremendous here let me see who who is able to find it well rook d1 rook e1 yes oh paras bhoir well done paras bhoir is the one who's found it vedanta here very nice anurag sanyal nice so the move here that i was looking for and one is rook to b5 if you would have said this move rook to b5 would have been epic because now you can't protect this and once you play c5 my rook is permanently lodged here it's like that food that is lodged in your back tooth It's irritating, very irritating here. The rook cannot be moved out from here, and maybe I can play now rook e one or rook d one, which both are both are fine. So with it said, I'll take back with the pawn. I'll take here with the pawn, and now Dubov played rook f to e one, and his plan is to play bishop d three, putting more pressure here. and you know like something let's let's just say a random move like c6 
then I can play bishop d3 but I can also sacrifice an exchange here and play this way this is looking terrible for black you see under development the pieces are not developed the rooks are on their initial squares e5 is hanging the bishop is very strong queen g6 check is threatened it's all over so with it said by dubo sack whack marega on e4 he will sack his rook before that let me take on g3 so he took on g3 now he took back and already I feel very scared about with its position. I don't care if the engine gives a very small advantage for uh, Dubo. Practically, it looks terrible. It looks very dangerous. Shriram and also knight takes e5 after... Uh, you mean... No, it was knight e5 and he took with the bishop. Didn't get it. So now, with it pushed his pawn to e4, but it's a, it's not a threat really because you can't take it. Rook takes e7 is hanging. So he played the move here, very very strong move, hitting the center. G4. Now with it is like, oh my god, I haven't developed. I need to do something. Dubo is just killing this position. I can't castle here. And so he came up with an idea, which is knight c5. And now the knight is like the happiest creature in the world. Why? Can anyone tell me why is this knight very happy? What is the reason? Agrim Guglani says, I love your stream, Sagar Shah. Well, Agrim, thank you so much. But try to find why is the knight happy? Why is the knight so, so happy? happy in this position it is an outpost it can't be kicked abirami vs immovable somitra deb very good no attackers mahek ranka everyone's giving the different answer but the same gist which is correct it's kind of a move that it is kind of square from where it cannot move and with that we have the first new member of today palish Nag Devte, thank you so much, Palash, for becoming backer of Indian chess. It is an outpost, and guys, because there is no B pawn or D pawn to kick it away, it is beautifully placed. So Dubo now says, Look, with it, I know that if I take here, you will take with the bishop. Your knight is also defending this. You may even think about long castle. So I'm not going to take this. I'm going to play knight to d4. And now he is attacking the e4 f5 pawn. So with it goes rook f8. He defends that. And now the position is so interesting. The reason why I find this position interesting and exciting is because black's king is in the center. So Dubo has to figure out a way of how to kill this king. Because imagine, okay, I'll, I'll just tell you a small imaginary position, okay. Suppose you give a check. I'm not, I'm, I know it's hanging. It's, I know it's hanging, but I'm just giving you this situation where he takes and you take. In such a position, black is completely okay now. Because let's say you take, I take, I take, you take, for example, something like this. This is utterly lost position for white. The end game is a total disaster. Because first of all, you are a pawn down. Don't forget, Dubo has sacrificed a pawn. Secondly, his pawn structure here is totally ruined. The knight on c5 is an absolute monster. He's going to defend it with b6 and then long castle or get his rook into the game via rook d8. So it is very clear that Dubo cannot exchange his queen in this position. He needs to keep the queens on the board and he needs to figure out a way to attack. So here's, here's a very, very cool variation that I'm going to show you, which you're going to love. Take care. Ready? Take. Now, with it is like, okay, Mara hai, apne ko bhi marna hi to padega. So he takes it with the bishop. Now, my question to you is, can you find an absolutely stunning move in this position for white? White to play 
can you find an absolutely stunning move? Rishabh Singhvi. Wow, Paras Bhar, how, do, how are you guys so good, man? How are you guys so good? Divyan Singhwal, Tamil Dholani, No Name, Xavier, Pranav Nair, Mudit, Fahad Haq, Nimit Thakkar, Aharshi Mandal, Chess is Great, Dexter, Oh my God! Take it. Look at this. It's just a crazy variation. Rook takes b7. Boom. Boom. Okay. And now all the people, yeah, Joe knight b7, uh, Joe Logan rook b7. Bula. If I take the rook, what is the problem here? White to play. Now you tell me. What sort of a move is rook b7? Savita chess says. Well, Savita, you have to find now White's next move. Yes, Savita, you are right. Rishabh Singhvi, yes. Guys, please don't try to use an engine. Use your brain. Try to figure out a move on your own. Rita Brita Barman, Naman Sachdev, Suyash Swaroop, Siddhan Sinha, Shrikar Ale, Savita Chess. Brilliant job, guys. Bishop B5, check. I give a check here. Now the king would love to go to f7, but knight f5 loses there. The bishop is hanging. But if you play king d8, there is a massive fork coming on c6 and you lose the queen. So you can't go king d8. King f7 is kind of unappetizing. You could play c6, but then after bishop c6, you might want to go here, saying that the bishop has taken up the square. But then after knight f5, Rook f5 and rook takes e4. This position is just totally gone. Queen is attacked. If you move the queen, where do you move the queen? Let's say you move your queen to f7. And then I can play rook d4 check. King goes somewhere. Rook d7 is coming. Queen f5 would be hanging. This position is an utter disaster for black. So, if Dubov takes, and I'm sure Dubov is going to find this because he's like this amazing. And then bishop b5, Vidit is actually has to play king f7, and then knight f5, and then queen e5. I mean, at the very least, let's say something like king here. White is just having great position the black king is weak Mrityunjai says scary part is Dubo is definitely a player who can find rook b7 I, I feel that Dubo is just looking at those lines here right now this is the live position on the board Dubo is actually thinking about all these things here but if he does not play that you know, there are other things also which can get him distracted, by the way. He can get distracted by check here. Because if you play c6, by the way, guys, I must introduce you to the man who just, I took his name right now, Mrutyunjai Jalan. He is from Assam and he has sponsored two kids from Northeast in, in uh, Assam. One is Shahil Day, other is Mayang Chakraborty and 5 lakh rupees to Shahil Day and 2.5 and lakh to Mayang Chakraborty. So, you know, somehow through this chat, through this YouTube uh, channel, through Chess Base India, so many people have come forward and are powering chess in India. So, a big, big thank you to everyone who's supporting and Mrutyunjai, thank you for, you know, this amazing gesture. How about rook f6 after rook b7? You are very right, Ishan. We'll come to it. But here, this one seems bone crushing because after take, take, 
check here and I lose the rook. So that doesn't work out. So Dubov might be considering also bishop b5 check. And if your suggestion after rook b7, not here directly, but after gf5, bishop f5, I think you must take it. Otherwise, that is a very dangerous pawn. The bishop would come in. And after take, rook f6 seems like a plausible move, but it's like your house is on fire. And you have the presence of mind to go in and say, oh, I have to travel outside India tomorrow. So let me go and take my passport. Something like that, you know. It's like when, when Dubo makes a move like Rook takes B7, in order to play a move like Rook F6, that's not easy. That is not easy. Well, the point of it is that if he gives this check, then now King can go to F8. So you've got some space for your king here and this would be a nice position for black so i'm not sure if what is going to happen here but it's a very exciting position and we will come back to it i will also leave it on on the live board here so that you can see it but let's go and quickly check what little pragu is up to because i'm so so excited that pragna nanda is playing in this tournament and he is what a structure he has what is this <laughs> guys this is horrible structure but is it enough let's have a look quickly at as what happened e4 c5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 mm. so jordan wants to play something offbeat something non-theoretical e6 castles d5 bishop b5 so in a way he's gone for sicilian rosolimo by actually losing a tempo but provoking this move d5 and i think you know these two guys are very scary jordan van forest and daniel dubov if i have to play you know these two players i would be very scared especially because after the world championship they have so many new ideas up their sleeve that I don't want to be facing them. So just to uh, check on our chess base 16 board as to how many times this position has occurred. Bishop c4 castles. This has happened in 1700 games. And after d5, bishop b5 only in 8 games. Farkash. Animal, I mean, all 1100, 1800 players have played this. It's not an opening that has been played at the highest level. And Daniel Dubov, uh, sorry, Jordan Van Forest once again showing that when it comes to the openings, he is one of the most dangerous players. Coming back. Oh, by the way, guys, in Vidit's game, that has happened. Thoda bada karta hu yaha pe. He has, he has taken on f5 and now the bishop has taken on f5. Will rook takes b7 happen? If rook takes b7 happens, it's going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, I'm going to make this board smaller and we are going to wait for what Dubo is going to play here. That is a very exciting position. Yes, how many of you think rook takes b7 is going to happen? Utsav says, Jordan is always well prepared. He even gave interview that 90% of work is done on computer. Yeah. And also, the fact is that Jordan is not just good at computer preparation. He is also able to come up with new ideas, which is very rare. You know, it's like this, that someone gives you a book, okay, and tells you to read it. And let's say, let's say uh, a book some self-improvement book like say hyper focus which i have here and someone reads it now what jordan can do is he's able to come up with new ideas to use the techniques which he has read here and apply it in his life and the same thing he does on the chessboard is that when the engines give new ideas he's able to use them to come up with more ideas and then Analyze them with engines in return. So he's a very dangerous second to have. And that's why Magnus Carlsen actually had him in his team for the world championship match. 
ओके सो बिशप बी फाइव डी ई नाइटी फोर नाइटी फाइव क्वीन सी सेवन टेक्स टेक्स एंड सो इन रिटर्न फॉर दिस हॉरिबल पॉन स्ट्रक्चर प्रज्ञानंदा हैज एन एक्स्ट्रा पॉन he goes bishop d6 attacking this pawn on h2 so king h1 has been played this is a very you know you guys many times when you play this way uh okay let's let's do a poll by the way while vidit is thinking for uh, while dubo is thinking for his move as to whether dubo is going to take on b7 or not should we do that okay let's do a poll very quickly will dubo take on b7 okay so by the way when when this happens most of you would play h3 or g3 correct these are the two ways but add this in your arsenal as a very interesting move why because when he takes here it's not a check and when it is not a check you can play a move here that is very powerful so can you find it white to play what do you do in this position white to move mohit sai this event is not online it's happening in vikanzi netherlands g3 garvit kalra you are absolutely right can anyone tell me which game reminds you of this bishop takes h2 and g3 let me see how many of you have a very good knowledge of chess classics oh by the way chat chess moves has begun again thank you so much keith for making it work you know keith mascarenas who is one of the mods of this channel has made this possible 145 people have said fisher spaski ekam singh well done rishab pant yes you are right chess fabrigas who is fix this yes fisher spaski sachin ranade says isn't three pawns good compensation yes sachin will discuss that garvit no name paras manas ekam kush prallad vaibhav aditya abhirami well done this is the move so the point is that here after g3 bishop g3 fg3 queen g3 would have been very good compensation if black had more pieces in the game like the knight was here then it would have come here but now white can play queen e2 and then after knight f6 you can play something like queen g2 and black is not able to gain counter play and in such positions the minor pieces minor piece means more than the pawns because it's very difficult to roll these pawns right so that's the reason why this is not a good idea but fisher spaski game number 1 is where fisher went and chopped off this pawn it was spaski fisher he took the on h2 and spaski played g3 and won that bishop end game meanwhile uh dubo is still thinking he's down to 28 minutes we have the little board here on the side where dubo is thinking that is vidit versus dubo live board there okay coming back to little prugs game what happened after this he went knight f6 knight c3 good e5 f3 move okay well, i would take it he also took and now castling seems good yes he castled d3 looks fine now now some ideas of bishop g5 coming up and pragnananda i think didn't play a good move here he played bishop e6 that seems a little too too much of freedom i guess he took here because after take take what has happened is that his pawn structure is terrible and maybe if he had played some other move here like rook b8 activating his rook that would have been much better so take take here bishop g5 queen d7 and he started playing a bit too passively and here prag actually got a chance to connect his pawns back so that's good news for him 
knight e4 hitting this pawn he wants to take it f5 knight takes d6 queen takes d6 rook a e1 and f4 was played by pragnananda rook e4 rook b8 he is putting pressure here on b2 so b3 and he's put his rook there nice play by prag prag is good in such positions guys he knows when to defend he knows when to attack so he's actually very good queen e2 putting pressure on e5 wanting to take that pawn he took queen g4 check king h8 maybe king f7 getting the king towards the center was also a possibility but he went king h8 rook e4 so here it seems everything is okay for black he's pawn up white is better but it's not like white is winning but prag now all of a sudden i don't know what went to him he just gave up a pawn on f3 and he didn't have to because pawn was his only compensation for all these weaknesses he could have gone back queen e8 queen f8 but he went f3 g takes f3 and now queen f8 attacking this pawn and Jordan played queen g3 and he said, Prague, if you want to take it, be my guest. I'm taking on e5. So Prague said, no, I'll play h6 first. But king came to g2 defending this pawn. And now you will realize that pawns are equal in this position. And Prague is left with a lot of weaknesses. And this looks like a very dangerous position. Threatening rook g8 check. Although it's not a killer, that you have the h7 square. So king h7. Queen to h4. Oof. My god. Guys, look at this. Look at this move. Queen h4 by Jordan. He is so confident about his position that he is even ready to go into a rook and pawn endgame. Pawn down. Rook c4. Just over. Yeah, you're, you're losing this pawn. You will lose this pawn, you will lose here, you will lose here, you will lose this. You know, it reminds me of this thing that if in your life you don't plan your health well and you make a lot of wealth for yourself, like here, Prag has an extra pawn, that's wealth, but he didn't take care of the health of his pawns, then sooner or later, your health is going to stop you and this is exactly what's happening now this is falling while look at Jordan he took care of his health of the pawns yes he doesn't have as much wealth he's a pawn down hence proved health is more important than wealth <laughs> but okay let's oh by the way a news has come in that Anish Giri drew his game against Shakriyar Mamediaro knows g4 g5 or anything of that sort today by Shaq but a good result for Mamediarov because he was playing with the black pieces and a draw versus the super solid Anish is a good result. I guess black would have gone back bishop g6. Ooh, look at, let's go to with its game. What has happened? And Dubo has taken on b7. Boom, he has captured the pawn on b7. And guys, this, you know how Dubo plays here's his rook he would use his like left hand and he would have taken like in full style like he takes with one hand he captures it like this okay, i can't show it on the camera but you can get it you can see, see some of dubo's games on chess uh on chess base india channel and you will see how he captures this so he's taken the b7 pawn now the knight can take it but look at this is a good calculation point Knight b7, what does white do? If bishop b5 check, by the way, if you go queen a4 check, that is not going to work because of, can anyone tell me why is this a blunder? Very quickly. J. Karthikian says, I'm sad because I'm Vidit fan. Are J. Karthikian, Vidit is not losing yet. It's just that Dubo has taken that pawn, which is like very dangerous move but it's not lost yeah with it is not going to yes bishop d7 mr dam shobit joshi rita britam barman neeraj thakkar rahul khatwani heath kothari 
अनुराग मिश्रा एब्सोल्युटली सो बिशप डी सेवन नाउ बिशप कम्स एंड ब्लॉक्स द क्वीन एंड दिस इज विनिंग दिस इज एब्सोल्युटली विनिंग फॉर विदित सो डुबो इज नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट ही विल गिव अ चेक हियर नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज what should with it do here now it's a very simple case of elimination because c6 bishop c6 is not good you take take and all of a sudden the king is in a big problem after king f5 king d8 knight f5 rook f5 we saw rook e4 with the idea of rook d4 and queen f5 and rook d7 so even though you are a rook down look at this rook it's completely out of the game and it's winning for white here so c6 is not good you can't play king d8 because of knight c6 so what is the only move left king f7 once you go to f7 i take this now such positions are very difficult to play even though it might not be decisive advantage for white yet but it's a very nice position the king is running the knight is active h6 is falling bishop c4 check can come the bishop can be placed here there's queen b3 check too many issues right <coughs> so with it does not want to take on b7 but if you don't take on b7 what do you do you know there is one cool move i have a question for all of you here can black long castle in this position is it allowed to castle long here this way is it possible that the king can go here and you can long castle let me know yes or no by the way dubo has taken on b7 and we had a poll running whether he would take on b7 or not and i want to see how many people had said that he would take here i think many of you yeah Eric Rosen did this recently so all those who are saying no you have to remember that in chess when you have to castle the attack has to come in between the square from where the king moves to the square where he is going so here the king is going from e8 to c8 so therefore no one is attacking that square the rook is attacking b8 which is not in between queen king's path so the long castle move is possible although it's a horrible move it's a horrible move i don't recommend it because the king is like completely naked here there is nothing here and there's a very nice move here can you find it korchnoi did not know about this chess king yes there's a very famous game where the bishop is on b7 looking at the h1 square and korchnoi i think goes and asks the arbiter can i castle here because the bishop is looking on h1 square the king is going from e1 to g1 so you can castle yes rook b8 shreyas karthik you are right you are right shreyas karthik akis channel jihan shah ayush patel saswat parida arpit shah shubham goenka rook b8 check takes and knight c6 that is game over so you cannot play that <clears throat> so if you can't play long castle here uh i mean it's possible to play it's not illegal but it's a bad move then what do you do can you try to figure out what should black play in this position take your time think put yourself in with its shoes imagine that daniel dubo is sitting in front of you the genius the 2018 world rapid champion he's there sitting in front of you in his balenciaga sweater and he's looking at you and you need to figure out oh my god what do i do in this position let's see what is the move that you all suggest yes we'll also look at duda versus carlson game after this but this is definitely the game of the round yeah yes yes ujwal pande i did say rook f6 but that was a question by someone I just want to see what are the moves that are being suggested here by the, by all of you. Rook f6 is by far the most quoted move. It's also the engine's number one move. So Pratik, 
वैली गंदला मयूर नरेंद्र आयुष आरुष महेश कैलाश समवन एंड तेजस दैट इज गुड ई थ्री इज जस्ट नॉट गुड गाइज बिकॉज इफ यू प्ले ई थ्री हियर ही विल जस्ट टेक this night of five i know you had a very uh, cheeky sneaky threat you wanted to play e3 and capture the queen but i'm not going to allow that so uh, that is not going to happen but yes rook f6 is the move that could happen and the reason is that after a check here the king can go to f8 and it's a better position for vidit remember that in this position with it still has many of the trumps and if he can get his king to safety then he should be fine but is finding the move rook f6 easy for with it i doubt it i seriously doubt this because of a very simple reason that when you are put under pressure and as i gave this example when your house is on fire it is very difficult to think calmly but if you are able to think calmly like you know there is this very uh, famous advice that is given it's like when you are winning in a position like when your emotions are going really high in a better position you should simply get up from the board and go to the washroom yeah you should just try to or maybe just walk around a bit because that will help you to calm down and maybe if with it calms down here or you know he was looking at this game just without any emotions he would be able to find rook f6 with the idea of bringing his king from f8 to g7 because otherwise i mean rook cannot go to f7 the bishop is controlling that also moving this rook makes hardly any sense as we just analyzed this doesn't look good i i won't be surprised if vidit goes for something like king f7 and knight f5 i mean he might think that even this position is playable and really it's not it's not clear like for example queen e4 bishop c4 king g6 is it very clear here that white is winning guys can you find the winning move for white it is winning but can you find the winning move let's see how many of you are like do both can find this move here heat gandhi says why not bishop c8 heat i think bishop c8 he will go rook b5 just go back or bishop b5 check maybe doesn't look good well not easy a yeah? few of you are able to get this very tough move very tough move let's see how many everyone wants to take on e4 but then if i take your knight on f5 maybe that's good for me no say for example here look at this chat chess moves rook e4 everyone says by the way the right move here is the very very spectacular which i'm not going to say just now but if you take rook e4 then can i not just take on f5 yes you might go for a check here but after king g7 black is doing okay like check and now i don't want to go king g6 because there could be bishop d3 but i can play king f6 and i guess you have to draw here so it's a draw here but the move that is absolutely crazy 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 move is knight e7 check and a big big congratulations to vikas gaurav parth shrest sarva drawing madhu digital nick and live chess if you guys found this without an engine you thought on your own amazing guys i really want you to think on your own please don't use engines please try to think on your own you will improve as chess players take your rook e4 and now i'm attacking your queen and idhar se piche se deadly move is going to come from the queen this is a brilliant setup three pieces in one line 
This piece moves and gives a disco. It's called a discovered check. We call it the disco. And the queen has to move away. But wherever it moves, the game is all but over here. Rook e7 check. And it's mate. This time, if queen f5, there is bishop d3. And otherwise, the king has no real moves. If you go to h5, I have queen e2 check already. And if you go g4, rook e5, the king is going to get checkmated here. Queen e4, king g7, rook e7, and it's all over. If you go back, uh, sorry, to h8, there is queen h7 mate. If you go rook f7, I take, 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 take. Uh, and then finally take here. So that looks very neat. Oh my God! Vidit Gujarati has played rook f6. Bow down to Vidit Gujarati. He has found the best move for black in this position. He is fighting on. And guys, he is still in the game very much so. He has found the best move in the position, rook f6. He's made his way for the king to go to f8 to g7. Now, Dubo, who had taken on b7, rook takes b7, has to now come up with a new idea. Okay, the pawns are now equal, five pawns aside. But if Vidit can go, king f8, king g7, and bring his other rook to f8, black's position looks more cohesive, looks more coordinated. <laughs> Manit Mohapatra says, I don't care if Vidit loses now. He found rook f6. That's enough. Well, I don't think Vidit agrees with you, yeah? I don't think Vidit agrees that he, he would not want to find. But let's try to think what will Dubov do here. I guess he will try to move his rook away and he will play it to b5. And it's not simple here, guys. There are still many, many traps in this position. Many things to see. Now, firstly, the most natural move here looks king f8. Correct? But it fails to a very powerful blow. The powerful blow is knight f5, rook f5. And now for your next question, what should white play in this position? White to play. Very important move here. White to move. Can you find it? Black Lotus OP Kartu. <laughs> well, was it the only move, Venkata Krishnan? Yes, it was the only move which kept him in the game. But it was not easy to find. I mean, somewhere you had a choice of taking on B7, where the position was not completely lost, but it was terrible. It was like almost on the edge, but rook f6 keeps you in the game. Here, the brilliant move that white can play and kudos to everyone who's found it is rook e4. Excellent job done here by Arshia Das, very young player, I think from Tripura, from Northeast, yes, Arshia, Jihan Shah, Monil Maru, Mista Dam, Gaurav Mahajan, Jaya Ruben, Shaibi Binoj, Neeraj Thakur, Akis Channel and Sauratya Ghosh. Well done. The move is rookie 4 and the problem is that you cannot take here because now rook takes f5 is hanging. So that was the point. But... Look at what we have on the board. After rook takes b7, rook f6 was played in the position. And now Daniel Dubov has played the move queen to b1. Oof, man, Daniel Dubov again coming up with some very creative move. Okay, they go. A bad threat. Hai, rook b8 check. That is a massive threat. He wants to check, check and play this. And we really have to be careful. For example, just, just for the sake of uh, clarifying. Check here, here, here. You might think that king is safe. But king is not safe. Can you, can you find the deadly move? I want, I want 500 people to write this move. Guys, please. Chalo. 500 people can this move. It's very simple. It's very simple. All of you who usually don't like to answer, they're like, yaar, 
कौन टाइप करेगा हु वॉन्ट्स टू टाइप प्लीज डू इट नाउ दिस वन इज वेरी सिंपल वाइट टू प्ले दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क बट क्वीन बी वन हैज अ वेरी वेरी नाइस आइडिया बिकॉज ही वॉन्ट्स टू गो रुक बी एट चेक Flashbin gaming, no. See, many of you are writing the wrong notation, guys. Notation ठीक से लिखो. Write the write the right notation here in the position. Queen G8. Oh, three hundred and ninety-two people already. One minute. Let me see. Are we going to reach five hundred? Three eighty-two. Brilliant. And by the way, this chat chess moves is designed in such a way that you cannot. um it counts all unique answers yeah it doesn't if you write 10 times one person write 10 10 times it's only counted as one so we have 500 people brilliant job guys brilliant shreyas karthik aiden dhanay doshi mistadam gitanjali aditya prashant no name shubham goenka siddharth bhat and rick jena this is the correct move the queen now swoops over to g8 and checkmate position is over so the king actually running away there is not going to help so that now you realize that rook b8 is a massive massive threat by daniel dubov so what do you do as with it you think to yourself let me get rid of this rook so you take on b7 he comes in with queen takes b7 now two things one is that he can take queen b7 the other thing is he can take here because now the point is the queen is attacked and secondly after rook f5 which is forced now i can take on b7 or i can insert rook takes e4 attacking your queen pinning it here what is the only move here for black guys what's the only move here kishmat bhattar i says finally i got right move congrats to me congratulations all those who found the right move queen g8 well done swastik sahu says only 22 moves have been played and we are already down to real time pressure is going to come soon that is true yes rook e5 is absolutely right uh, i have a few people who have mentioned this dhanay shivam siddharth abhiraj shreyas rudraksh vaishnav manas no name chess king so you have to play rook e5 and now after this if i take you will take queen me queen e5 and this is great position for black because after queen takes b7 uh i will just play my rook to d8 and i am exchange up i'm not going to get checkmated here because my king is pretty safe also the c7 pawn is defended correct so that's not that's not a trouble for now but after rook e5 he can take on b7 attacking the rook on a8 and now if i play this move this is cause for trouble because now there is queen c6 check and the problem is that you could play anything i'm going queen g6 check if you are going to play king f8 i'm going to take on h6 with a check so all these problems may force you to go rook d7 and then there is check here on g6 when you can't interpose because the bishop is looking here if you go king f8 there is queen g8 mate so you have to play king d8 and in comes check king here queen here and i can i take this then he takes back with the rook so i don't want to take that but i will take here rook e5 and now you can't take because this is pinned so you have to take here but now i'm a piece up so that's a massive uh, complicated line but the main thing is that after queen takes b7 i need not move my rook i can actually take on e4 and after queen takes a8 i can go queen d7 check here king e8 check here king d7 and we can agree to a draw if this happens that would be a good result for with it for this attack but but that's the point yeah like whether dubov here after knight b7 will take on f5 or will he take on b7 because if he takes on f5 it's a forced draw it seems to me 
So he might have to take on b7 first before taking on f5. Now Vidit has only move which is to bring his rook to d8. And this position, I guess white has many, many options. First of all, there is queen b5 check. Second of all, there is knight f5 check. I'm also wondering if you can, if you can go bishop b5 check. So there are too many, many options. Vidit has taken the rook. What will Dubov play? Guys, will he take on b7? Will he take on f5? What is the move that Daniel Dubov will play in this position? This is... Smita Joshi is asking me to make a video on Ponziani opening. Smita, right now let's focus on this game, okay? We can make many videos on Ponziani opening every single day. But right now... You won't be able to see such a game. Vidit has taken on b7 and Dubo has 20 minutes. Vidit has 10 minutes. We are down. And you know, Dubo would be somewhere thinking that Vidit has only 10 minutes left to make 18 moves. And somewhere he might be thinking, let me mix up the position. Let me not give him easy moves to make. Because see, if you play knight f5, then I will take. So he's taken on b7. That was exactly what I thought. Because if you take on f5, there is rook f5. And it looks that black's defensive task is easier there. So he has taken now on b7. And with it instantly goes rook d8. With it like, by mere pas time come hai. Apne wo panvel pochne ga hai. He goes rook d8. He's played his rook to d8 now. Hmm. Okay, can we go knight c6 here with a fork? Maybe I go queen here. Oof. Oof. Look, look, look. Here. And now I can take here. This could become dangerous, yeah? This could become dangerous. So let's not let's not get there. Knight c6 is a bad move. Queen c5, take, take. This is dangerous for even white here in this position. Uh, because the knight is kind of trapped. You see here the rook is controlling. Knight e6, the rook is controlling. So I don't want to do this. Dubo can't play that. Now Dubo has 19 minutes on the clock. What is the other move that he can play? I guess what makes it very difficult here is that Dubov can punch from many sides. He can take here. He can play queen b5 check. And actually queen b5 check. Let's have a look at that move. Because now you want to play. Uh, you Your bishop is hanging here twice. So you can't play king f8. And if you play bishop d7. I want to go queen d5 threatening a check here. Let's say I drop the bishop back somewhere. Where? Can I go bishop e6? Then could bishop e6? Queen e4. Ah, there is a pin here. That doesn't work. Okay. Uh, can I go bishop c8? Queen g8? Now, if I, if I go rook here, this is going to be a beautiful checkmate. Guys, look at this. Queen g6 check. King is kind of horribly. If you go king d7, queen c6 mate. It's a, it's a brutal mate. And if you play rook f7 here, then rook takes e4. And suddenly, all of black pieces are horrible. So after I'm actually looking at variation after variation, just trying to get a sense of what is happening. And from all these variations, it seems like Vidit is walking on an ultra thin rope. He has to, the engines are evaluating this position as 0.00. .00 but he has to find one defensive move after another. And that too, he has to be accurate. This is not easy. It's not easy. Let me see very quickly what's happening with Duda and Magnus Carlsen. It seems like the position is around even. And the game could end in a draw here. Okay. 
good job by Duda actually uh, holding Magnus. And what about Van Forest Pragnananda? Uh, this horrible rook endgame where Prag is in big trouble because. By the way, guys, did you get to know that Prague's coach, GM? Oh, by the way, Rook G5. Can Prague now fight back with Rook F5? Or no? Oh, look at this, guys. Rook F5, I will take E F5. And now what? The winning idea here is King here to E3. And once you go King G6, I will play f4. And the point is that after f4 and e, king f4, I will create a passer here on this side of the board because I have an extra pawn there. Your king will be deflected that side and I will win these pawns and my h pawn will win the game. This I think is, oh, but he went back. He didn't even take. Oh, he didn't take. Somehow no one's uh, risking to go into pawn end games. Maybe taking was the fastest way to win, but here Pragnananda has some chances. Yashaskar has sent a super chat saying, Sagar GOP, all the best to Vidit and Pragnananda. Thank you, Yashaskar, for your super chat. Let's go to Vidit versus Dubov back. Ooh, oh, some moves have happened. Guys, Win B7, Rook D8, he's taken on F5. Rook f5, that seems to ease out with its job a bit, a bit, not much. Okay, let's see, let's think. Hmm. Okay, first things first, rook e4, agar marega, to what shall we do? Ooh, this is getting intense, guys. What is the move here that with it has to play? Black to move, what would you play here? Can you tell me? It's not easy. <laughs> Look at this. Kanish Kumari says, sorry, Kashish Kumari says, I am having anxiety watching Vidit's game. Don't be anxious, guys. Don't be anxious. I think Vidit is going to hold this because, you know, once you take, he's taken on e4, by the way. He's taken here and now Vidit has to find the only move in this position which is rook d1 but i want to see how many of you actually got this move rook e5 oh all of you blundered big time see it's not easy rook e5 is a massive blunder the reason is queen c6 check now you might say but what's the big problem i'll move my queen oh if you move your queen you lose your rook okay okay if i lose the rook i'll move my king away hey well if you move your king away i'll take this with a check and it's a massive attack if you go here then I'll give queen h8 check. And then I'll pick up your rook here. Okay, okay, get it, get it. So then what if I just play rook d7 here? Well, if you play rook d7, then I go queen g6 check. Once again, you can't put the bishop in between. You will, if you go king f8, queen h8 is a mate. So you try to go to king d8. And as we saw, queen g8, rook e5, peace down. So... Not rook e5, but with it plays rook d1. That is the right move. Well done with it. But what about king h2? Or is that bishop f1? But now look at the difference, guys. Ye jo rook tha, ye rook ne bola ki bhai, ye riske andar kuch tha. I don't know. Maybe it fell down. The point is that if now you give, oh, by the way, Albin Matthew, thank you for super chat. Also, Devan Segal Sagar White, please take good care of your health. What good care of your health? This is epic. Now, one second. First of all, if you go Bishop F1, okay, now Rook E5, check, and suddenly the king is like, thank you so much, my buddy Rook. You have given me a place on D8. The Rook actually found some space and if you give a check now i can go king d7 when my king is absolutely safe here so rook d1 was a clearing clearance move in between move to clear the d8 square for the king because all other squares like f8 was in trouble from queen h6 and coming in between was not good enough so now dubov plays king h2 and with it comfortably puts his rook on e5 Nice.
This is good defense, and I think Dubo is kind of forced now. Yeah, what to do? This game is getting very exciting. Because let's imagine I give a check. Okay. Now King F8 is bad as we know Queen here. So you have to play King D8. And now I'm thinking what exactly how to attack. Let's say I give a check. You have to come up. And then I give a check here. You can't take this because I, you lose your Queen. Correct. That might not be the best. So you go King E6. You want to go King D6 but that is a checkmate so you go king e6 <laughs> no man this king but he has he has material he's material on his side queen g8 king f5 the king is on a journey of its own and look at this i give a check from here if you take on e4 queen g4 check you remember the Fugri mate yesterday we discussed. Once again, checkmate. He's just turned the thing around and he's checkmated him. You can't take this rook on e4. It's not right. You have to come back. You have to come back here and then a check and then up. And perhaps this is a draw. Man, let's just look at what Dumo is going to do here. So it's still not over. The engines are shouting draw, but it's not a draw. It's not a draw. Anything can happen. Oh, I didn't make it full screen. Sorry. Very sorry, guys. Sorry. I guess you could see a bit, but what I was trying to show you is that there are some great attacking ideas still in this position. But what I loved about with it is, with it is that he's taking one move at a time. And he's moved to 11 minutes on the clock. Dubo has 12 minutes only now. So he's come down. We are on move number 26. 14 more minutes. And Dubo is running out of firepower. Because he has a rook and a bishop and a queen. But the rook is kind of against each other here. Let's say if I give a check on c8. Then you come back to d8 and you are like, it's over. Game over. Black has won. There's no more check. Oh, you can give a bishop check here. But how does it matter? I just move king f7 and I'm winning. Abdullah Sheikh says, this is by far the best ever game I have seen. Well, Abdullah Sheikh, this tournament is going to show you some great, great games. But, but I love how both of them have, you know, attack and defense. Like it all started, it all started guys from this point onwards where... With it is a pawn up. His king is in the center. Dubo says, I'm hitting your center. With it says, I have a great square for my knight on c5. Dubo says, I don't care. I'm hitting your f5 pawn. With it tries to defend it. And then Dubo sacks his rook. You can't take the rook. You play rook f6, making a square for your king. That was great presence of mind by with it. Now queen b1, you take the rook. Queen takes rook d8. You take here. Rook e4 and now very important to first give this check. Clear the square for your king. You couldn't play rook e5 because there was a check. So check here. He does, by the way, he didn't go bishop f1. Because bishop f1, rook e5, you need this bishop in the attack. So why to bring it back there? You know, you, you play king h2, your king is safe. Because anyway, if, you, if he cannot give queen d6, the queen is pinned. So rook e5. And now Dubo is thinking, guys, Dubo has gone below with its time. 10 minutes, 38 seconds. We have Akshay Natu says this with it play his best game when he's away from cameras and build up. He's more relaxed here. I feel his positional strength in full display today. Well, I think with it generally plays well uh, and all, all the online events are sometimes a little bit different from over the board events like over the board he played at the world cup and he performed pretty well he played at world rapid and blitz his uh, performance in world blitz was pretty good but of course at tata steel it wasn't okay dubo now gives a check <clears throat> only move yeah or kuch nahi kar sakte we can't play rugby seven back that would be a horror 
queen g6 check we know that is lost king d8 queen g8 check it's over queen e8 rook e5 we've seen this variation again and again so with it has only move and he plays it king d8 you know when there are only moves on the board these super gms they can find it very quickly okay now king d8 now dubov is thinking <clears throat> so if vidit wants to take my rook how about i put a small trap bishop b5 now what is the trap here guys the trap is that if you take rook takes e4 i have a very nice move what is it white to play can you find it quickly very quickly before dubo makes his move i don't know if dubo is going to play bishop b5 but it's a sly trap it's a very cunning trap yes dhanay doshi very quick dhanay is like what's the question i'm going to type very quickly shivam choudhary you are also right monil maru oof the speed of the chat you guys are seeing it as quick as with it yes queen a8 is mate in one mate in one in this position because the bishop controls this it's all over khatam so this is not going to happen king d8 bishop b5 if this guys very sorry i think i just lost for a second but i'm back i'm back hopefully things are back just is it a level playing field where vidit is doing it all alone but his competitors have a huge team with them does it affect the players morale scale tail not really guys refresh refresh i'm back i'm back very sorry for that oh by the way dubo has played bishop b5 no 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 king d7 oh he gave a check king d7 bishop b5 is given a check oh man. what we were looking at has happened again through method of elimination by the way guys remember that we do not know if vidit has a team or not you know like what scale tail says that where vidit is doing it all alone but his competitors have a huge team not sure maybe dubo i don't know if he has a team or not or if vidit has a team or not now just imagine that rook b5 i take here then rook e7 and this end game is i think better for white because rook is hanging you will lose this pawn your pawns are loose it's still playable but not simple so right now if you are in with its shoes you are thinking to yourself should i take the bishop and risk this end game which looks okay safer or should i go up with my king because if i go up with my king that looks very scary as especially when you see king d6 and you see queen c6 mate you're like bhai yahan pe i have to be careful i have to be careful so king e6 here by the way Albin Matthew says great back and forth yeah it's like you know if this was a badminton match that's a great rally badminton or tennis it's like he's hitting trying to hit in the corner he's hitting back both of them playing phenomenally well but one mistake and the game is over by the way that variation which i showed after bishop b5 here with it could play queen d6 which is a classy move and if you take on e5 i take queen e5 check very important and you can't give this check here can you <laughs> guys isn't this mate just rookie at mate isn't it mate i'll get the live board sorry you know what happened when i restarted it it stall went completely berserk and haywire so i'll just put the live board it all became very big and so uh, did you see there is a disco in the position that's why it's not possible good if you if you guys saw that the queen is actually giving a check to the king then kudos 
okay let's transition now it's good all good all good all good okay so the rook is here by the way with it has played his king to e6 he has moved his king to e6 and he's like why we are going no no not king d6 he's played king e6 he's like my king is going to be brave here so now dubo has seven minutes 38 seconds to find the killer blow is there a killer blow though check here maybe rook comes back what do you think if queen c6 the rook comes back and my king is safe doesn't work if you give a check here now i have a choice between king f6 and king f5 how about king d6 also maybe also possible but here you start getting a little bit worried because of rook c4 threatening a mate so you really don't want to go here because after rook takes b5 queen g6 check right if king d7 there is queen c6 and queen b5 taking the rook and if you play queen e6 i have rook c6 king takes and queen e6 just and just a variation to show you that there is still a lot of fight left in this position dupo is not going to give this up easily and you know while we are actually saying that vidit is doing a commendable job of defending at the same time, his task is not over yet. It's move number 29. He has 11 more moves to make. He has 9 minutes 59 seconds, which is great. Dubo has only 6 minutes. If you re recollect, guys, on move number 22, at this position, after queen b1, when with it took on b7, this was move number 22. He had 10 minutes 30 seconds. And now on move number 29, he has 9 minutes 59 seconds. So he's made 7 moves in just 31 seconds. I mean with the increment of 30 seconds. So he's kept his time very well. He has He's putting pressure on Dubo. And you know if Dubo had like half an hour here. He would have put more pressure on with it. But with the clock on the side. With the time ticking by. And you see oh my god 5 minutes left only. Dubo has to now kind of make his ambitions a little lower you know it's like when you are in uh, when you have your tech team okay and you have a launch date and you're like oh i want to launch a product on this date but i want this feature and i want that feature but as the date of launch comes closer you're like okay let's leave it let's launch the product we have to get it out on time and the same thing dubo has to make sure that he reaches move 40 because if He's not able to make his moves quickly. Maybe the game ends in a draw. Yeah, like he, he will just say at the end, man, I can't find a win. Oh, he's played it. He's given a check here on C8. Queen C8 check. Hmm. What do we do? King F7. I don't like. There is Bishop C4 check. King F6. Ah, queen h8 check then maybe the rook hangs like this because if you bring your queen in i'll take king takes and i'll lose the rook so i'll be peace up so i have to go king f5 remember that variation that classy the one which you go round and round like take here and check here and here and check here and mate is i don't want that to happen that's horrible but queen c8 let's see where vidit moves his king actually for vidit this is also a fine move but of course you don't want to give this extra option of bishop c4 check so king f6 looks most logical but then you have queen h8 check okay let's look at how dangerous queen f7 is king f7 bishop c4 check okay only move now if i go king g7 queen g8 looks like a killer you know is it maybe not king f6 still fighting on the king is a dangerous guy he's not dying 
he has been put to test but just the fact that this rook is hanging so here the check from here you don't take this but you rather come back and then you are able to hold it so queen c8 let's see what with it plays he has 8 minutes on his hand Do you think Vidit will play his king to f6? I guess there are only two moves, right? I mean, rook d7 is a lost move because bishop d7, queen d7, queen d7, king d7, rook e5. You just lost look, rook down. So you have two moves, king f6 and king f7. Uh, we did look at king d6, but that's just lost after queen a6 mate. So, oh, he plays king f6, which is very logical, right? Because you don't want a check from the bishop. So, he's played king f6. Guys, this is going to be a draw, I think. Or is it? Is it going to be a draw? Sleeping Panda says, whatever the result might be, Vidit has played a great game. Yeah, I mean, it's a great game by both players. I think... You cannot have such a game if Dubo was not ambitious. Abhinav Gupta says, I don't know which is a better Jodi Sagar and chessboard or with Amruta alongside. By the, by the way, want to donate, please provide UP. I don't want to give YouTube a cut. Abhinav Gupta, by the way, a very good news I want to tell you is that we have managed to make Help Chess Foundation into a, it's a charitable trust and it is also now ATG certified. Which means that if you contribute to Help Chess Foundation, you can get the ATG uh, certificate from us and you will get tax benefits for your contribution. You know, there is this 50% of what you have contributed as tax deduction uh, and um, you can read about it and you can contribute to Help Chess. Uh, so I'll put the details in the description later but you can check it out so for sure by the way queen h8 check happened and now king has come to f5 so now the king is attacking this rook and i think what dubo will do and he's very smart yeah he will do this check he'll give this check and he will hope that with it takes this which with it won't with it is not going to fall for this If queen c8, king e4, queen g4, check, is lost. But there's no other move, yeah? Like, Dubo has to do this. And they will agree to a draw, I guess. If this game ends in a draw, this would be really a brilliant defensive effort by Vidit, I think. Because from starting with rook f6, he had to play many only moves in the position. Yes, some of them were easy, but some of them were really tough, especially rook f6, I don't think was very easy. Also, Dubo is thinking, I don't know what. Is Dubo thinking that can I take here, but that's just over. It's a check, remember, and you have to exchange the queen and then this is lost. I have a rook for a bishop. It's completely winning. And you have no other check left. Ah, you have g4, but g4 king here. That's over. What? He plays f3. Man, Dubo is... What a blunder. This is a huge blunder, guys. Dubo has played f3. What? What has he just done? F3. Unbelievable. Guys, I just take the rook. What is Dubov's idea? F e4? I mean king f4. I can play king e4. There's no queen d4 check. Rook takes d4. Vidit is winning. Vidit is winning this. Dubo has... And Vidit takes on e4. He takes on e4. F e4. And now take with the king. I know it's scary. I know it's scary to go in there. But... I mean the white king is not like Dudka Dula. He's going to get checked here anyway. And here, there is no check, yeah? Oh, there is a check on a8. Queen a8 check. 
King E3? <laughs> Queen F3? I'm going in and I'll go and sit on C1. I'll be very happy there. King on C1. Oh my god. I mean, the main problem with Daniel Dubo is that he cannot, he's such an exciting player that he always wants to play for a win. And that is the reason why he became the World Rapid Champion in 2018 and he can beat even Magnus Carlsen. But he can even make such blunders. When you are so much, you know, that I want to win, I want to win, you then don't see a check like Queen C8, which maybe he didn't see that there was a mate after King E4 like this. And he thought that he's forced to play f3. Maybe. But that just shows that with its defensive effort, put so much pressure on Dubo. Also, the fact that with it made his moves quickly and brought Dubo low on time brought about this blunder. And now, guys, the rest is not tough for a player like with it. I mean, he can even play king f4 when there is no more check. Like, if here there is no check, if you play g3, I go king f3. My king, rather than getting hunted, is actually hunting. It's the one which is going to checkmate the white king now. Let's see what with it does now. Because he can play king f4. I guess the only move that you have to be careful for is king g4. That's a blunder. Can you see why? Guys, quickly, before Vidit plays his move, why is this a blunder? Gopal, if, uh, by the way, queen takes e4 is not good, yeah? Because if queen takes e4, queen f8 or maybe queen h7 check should also, there could be some dangerous checks there. But this loses, yeah? You are right. This one, all of you who said Bishop E2 check are absolutely right. Abhimanyu, Mauna, Nishant, Pradeep, Saumitra, Aditya, Rahul, Mahek, Chessmaster and Anudeep. Bishop E2 check and you lose the rook. So Vidit is not going to do that. He takes on E4 with the king. Some of you asked what happens if I take with the queen here. But if you take with the queen, that also seems okay. Check king F4. And here also it seems that after check king e3, the king can run away to safety on c1. Anyway, after king e4, that's what Vidit played. Now Dubo has given a check on a8. All that Vidit has to do is see that his king is safely lodged on the c1 square. Once it goes to c1, it is going to be absolutely safe. Guys, if you are enjoying this video and if you are enjoying this commentary, do like the stream so that more people can join in. It's move number 34, six more moves to make. With it has five minutes, 40 seconds. His king is out in the open, but it's a safe king. Om Prajapati, thank you for becoming pillar of Indian chess. That's very kind of you. All the money that comes from membership goes to young talents of Indian chess. Akshay Natu says, petition for tournament organizers to play Kisi Disco Me Jai song every time there is a discovered attack on the king on any board. Akshay Natu will make chess into some kind of a... <laughs> okay, king e3, Vidit has played his king up the board. Nice move, Vidit. And now... Dubov, I guess, has to resign. King f3, king d2, queen f3, king d2, king c1. Vidit must be like very excited at this point. And guys, he might become the sole leader of the tournament, right? Because Magnus Carlsen was on one and half. And who else was on one and half before this round? I think the other player who was on one and half was... Rapport, I believe. Richard Rapport. We'll, we'll see what's happening in Rapport's game. But first, you know, at some point I thought it will end in a draw here. But Dubov played this horrible f3 because he could have played queen c8 and that was a draw as we saw king f6, queen h8. But he played f3 and all of a sudden, that's a huge shift. 
member for six months says VD for win now, no more draw. Ah, Duda. Duda was, oh, so Duda Carlson will draw, right? Because their game is a draw. Pallav Doshi, thank you so much for your super chat. So then Vidit becomes the sole leader with two and a half out of three. That's a great start for Vidit. And also with this win, he might gain Dubo is 2720. So when he beat Shankland, he got 4.7 ELO points. Here he will get 5 ELO points. And from 2732, he moves to 2737. 2737. Maybe you guys can check on 2700chess.com and figure out where does 2737 take him. Maybe world number 19 or 18. Johan Van Vreeberg says, Sagar, I'm actually not Indian, but I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> no, I mean, Johan, this game itself was so amazing that you have, it just brings out the enthusiasm. I mean, look at, when, when do you see a king marching ahead? Anshul Goel, black king about to castle on white side. Crazy game. Oh, yes. Oh, that's such a nice point that Anshul has said that if you go here, here, and then maybe let's say a move like this. This is an entire castling here. <laughs> nice one. Cagnus Malson says, was at office for 12 and a half hours today. Very tired. Was going to sleep right away as I got home because of VD Dubo and you. My sleep is ruined. With no regrets. Those last three words important. Cagnus. Thank you. Thirty seconds left for Dubo. Maybe he'll resign. Maybe he's resigned. Yeah, maybe he'll resign here. M three. Thank you for becoming backer of Indian chess. Oh, Arjun won against Daniel Darda. Well, Arjun, we're going to check that game. We'll also see Surya's game. We'll also. Oh, Duda and Magnus drew. By the way, he's played Bishop C six. What is on his mind? Oh, what is on his mind? Queen E five check. Let's get in now. Oh, and can we also go queen d6 check? I like queen d6 check also. Queen d6, g3, rook d2 check, but then maybe bishop goes back. It's not, it's not like mate mate yet, but there should be a way. Actually, Vidit has always done quite well against Daniel Dubo. And I, as I told you at the start of this stream, Vidit is the perfect player to kind of fight against ultra creative players. You know, like for example, Rapport, Dubo, even many times those players like Jobawa who like to just play very weird chess. Because Vidit is technically sound, yeah, he plays, he makes sound positional decisions. It becomes very difficult for these players to attack him. But Dubov like created fire on the board today. And it was very close to breaking through Vidit's defenses. But it was like, you know, when, when Dubov got in, like made a little bit of inroads into Vidit's camp, Vidit just back down and brought all his defensive energy and tried defended like anything today i mean he just played perhaps one of the best defensive efforts here's a nice idea guys look at this queen e5 check now you can't move your king up because rook coming from behind is over so you have to play g3 and now this move g4 the point is i'm going to give you queen h5 check and if king g2 queen h1 is a mate and if you give queen a7 check, my king anyway can go like d2 or e2. e2 is maybe even better because it stops queen f2 check. And then it's done. So Vidit has 3 minutes 22 seconds. We are on move number 35. 5 more moves to make. Many people here are very, very happy with, with its play today.
queen h1 is controlled by the bishop aditya yes for sure but if i get like from here to here and force your king to g2 and then give a check then there is no control here you know in chess it's never too late to make a blunder you know th there are mistakes always being wa being there you know they are waiting to be made so you you must be very careful till the very end and one of the things that good players do is when they are winning they take ultra care to make sure that they are not missing out on something and i think that is what vidit would be doing right now the only reason why he's taking so much time is that he wants to get it right absolutely he doesn't want to make any errors in his calculation but in a way it's the position holds nothing yeah really for dubo there are no no way in which he can make progress i guess vidit is thinking queen d6 or queen e5 but he's down to now 1 minute 40 seconds dubo has 44 seconds yes he's played queen e5 check dubo instantly goes g3 and now the question is will vidit play g4 i like this move a lot g4 making way for the queen to give a check on h5 let's see what vidit comes up with yes he goes g4 and we are on move 36 four more moves to make but i think it's already over this is done and dusted because now if queen a7 check i go king d2 if you go queen f2 i go queen e2 and then the queens are traded once the queens are traded it's all over 37 seconds left for dubo i think he's going to resign here Oh, he plays queen a7 check and now king d2. Darin N, thank you for becoming backer of Indian chess. Darin, thank you. You have been a member before as well. So very grateful that you have taken the membership again. What would be the accuracy of Vidit in this game? I'm not sure. But I think after a point he really, I mean in the opening I don't think he played exceptionally well. He gave Dubo some chances but once in the middle game he made many many excellent moves it's over it's over now i mean either you exchange the queens with queen d4 check which is like resignation because queen takes pawn takes this end game is lost rook versus bishop or you just resign ah or you try to play queen king g oh he resigns with it gujarati has beaten daniel dubov and moves on to two and a half out of three sole leader at the tada steel chess masters 2022 what a brilliant effort this was by vidit but excellent game by dubo as well as we say it takes two to tango this game was exciting only because dubo tried his level best to put pressure on vidit but vidit did not break in fact he put such a huge resistance that his opponent blundered just very quickly for all those who have not seen from the start of the game. The game was an Italian game where Vidit played a5, knight a3, took on a3, double dubo spawns. So many people fire this fire emoji in the chat, VDOP that's going on in the chat. Brilliant. But knight b8 by Vidit, d4 played by dubo. He brought his knight here. And I think at some point after 94, the position started to get very dangerous for Vidit. When he played e4, Dubo went g4, knight c5, 
and now this rook b7 but from this point onwards i think with it kept his cool and as many of you said black lotus effect yeah he managed to really really keep his calm because at this point i felt that with it could have lost his cool and taken this knight takes b7 when bishop b5 check was very powerful but he found rook f6 then he found this rook d8 then a check here then he put here and i think at this point i guess dubov should have agreed to a draw uh, no this didn't happen he played he played here queen c8 check king f6 and then queen h8 check king f5 and here it was very very important to give this check with the understanding that king e4 loses to queen g4 king d5 queen c4 king d6 queen c6 mate but he played f3 and after uh, this was a horrible move by dubov and then with it just cashed in and won the game guys how did you like this game sagar when is vidit versus anish i'm not sure but we'll check by the way we have a lot of members today akshay telang thank you for becoming backer of indian chess amay kulkarni thank you for becoming backer of indian chess rishikesh kanegaukar thank you for becoming backer of indian chess was this one of the best classical games played by vidit immortal maybe siddharth i don't think it's the best it might be his best defensive effort also the fact that in the end dubo blundered and vidit won might make this not his favorite game you know usually they like when the opponent doesn't blunder and you are able to outwit him but it it was a very good game okay let's quickly check 2737.5 is world number 19 says nitin desai so he's moved one spot up in the world rankings quickly moving up and you know if he has a good tournament he can very well reach 2750 that would be epic you know 2750 is no joke guys 2700 itself is very tough but 2750 that would be epic okay uh by the way duda versus magnus drew their game it was a ruy lopez Gordon says Vidit is rank number one with two and half out of three. Absolutely, Gordon, you are right. And Magnus actually using his world championship preparation here to hold a draw against Jan Sistov Duda. Well, it was a fighting game that ended in a draw. Fabiano Caruana versus Samuel Shankland seems like slightly better position for Fabi. I guess good chances here, but it is closer to equality. Let's see what happens here. Meanwhile, Jordan Van Forest and Pragnananda are still playing. King e4 has been played, and if now Prag goes rook d4 check, then King e5, rook takes c4, then a very nice move could be just b6. because pawn takes pawn takes and if you try to stop here then in comes a very powerful move rook check a uh, rook b3 and this pawn will queen so pragnananda might lose his first game and it was actually not needed you know prag became slightly over ambitious at some point or maybe he he just played like till here his position was tenable but the moment he played f3 here and queen f8 allowing king g2 he just gave back the pawn for without any reason and after that he has been struggling anish versus mamedyarov was a draw esipenko versus sergey karyakin is still going on oof what a game what a position but it seems like esipenko is winning right because esipenko has an extra piece here and sergey karyakin has no way to break through king d1 guess he can just resign here karyakin is winning he can go e5 and f5 next and then bishop moves out
First shadow says, I now have hopes for VD at the candidates. So proud says Prashant Mule. Well, it's it's still it's still quite early, of course, in this tournament. There are 10 more rounds to play, but Vidit has shown great chess. Ajaya VB says, next up Magnus. Yeah, well, he's beaten Magnus's second. Who is Vidit's opponent tomorrow? Vidit and Pragnananda's opponent. Yeah, let's have a look at Arjun's game because Arjun managed to beat. By the way, Nils Grandelius has lost to Richard Rapport. Um, so Richard Rapport actually beat Esipenko is with its next opponent. Mm -hmm. Nice. Esipenko is in good form yeah, here. Let's have a look at Arjun. Oh, Murzin drew, which means Arjun becomes a co-leader along with. So let's see. E4, C5. Now you guys have to guess few of Arjun's moves. Okay. Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, CD, Knight D4. And by the way, Daniel Darda is one of very big talented youngsters in the world of chess. Knight B5. D6, this is known as the Kalashnikov, not the Sveshnikov. If you have the knight on f6, then it's the Sveshnikov. Knight c3, a6, knight a3, bishop e6, knight c2. He's getting his knight back, bishop e2, take, take. So, in a way, Daniel managed to exchange the bad bishop for Arjun's good one. But in return, he has a weakness on an open file. Castles, castles, and now queen to d2. He played queen e7 and Arjun went in with knight d5. Maybe possible was also b3, rook f d1 or f3, playing normal chess, but he wanted to play immediately. Queen d8, although here maybe bishop d5 was possible and Arjun could have taken with the e pawn and slightly better position for white. But he went queen d8 and now Arjun came back. Queen went to b6, rook f d1. And uh, well, this is not possible to take. Can you tell me why? Why is this not possible? White to play. Why is this bad? Yep, rook b1 is the correct move. And the rook, the queen is trapped here. So you cannot take this. So he played rook c8 and now b3, very solid. Rook fd8, he played h3. Queen a7, you can see it's a very maneuvering game right now. Knight e7, knight to e3. So the moment, you see, this knight and this knight are connected. Why? Because of the d4 pawn. Safed B Kala B says, Duda is a dark horse, won World Cup, great performance in World Rapid and Blitz and has played well against VD. Now, since VD is in great form, expecting a great duel. Yes, for sure. I mean, as Vidit has said on numerous occasions, one of his toughest opponents is Yan Sistov Duda. He has always kind of struggled against him. Uh, and he said one of the players against whom he has had a good time in top 10 is Ding Lijen. So Duda is not, a, not an easy opponent. But first, he has Estipenko to face. So these two uh, pieces are connected by the d4 square here. So the moment this knight moves, he moved the knight away. Daniel went queen b8, queen d3. h5, h4, queen a7, bishop e2, king f8, bishop f3, g6, queen d2. Arjun has good patience. Yeah, he's just maneuvering his pieces. B5, nice move by Darda. And ooh, look at this. So Arjun is like 
now that the king is here i think i can go like this and maybe try to get some attack going here so he moved his knight and daniel said but now the d5 b5 break is one of the key elements in this position so i'll go for it arjun is like i don't care he wanted you to take it he took here he took back he spoiled his structure in a way got this isolated pawn in order to set up some attacking chances king at 7 he went rook c3 now the rook can at some point swing over you know right now it seems like there are three pieces in a line but he can sack one here then he can sack another one then the knight could come here and the rook could swing over i mean it's just a possibility rook c6 he went knight f5 very interesting move uh, because of course if you take here i take back with the pawn attacking your piece and the rook is hanging so you can't take on f5 so he went knight g8 queen g5 take on f5 what a massive mistake by darda but it's not so clear like take here tushar kumar says vd loses one game and haters are like vd for vlogs he wins one and haters become followers so proud of vidit believe classical is his strength yeah i mean it's always like that yeah people like and hate someone and once they are following so i guess he takes f5 and i think here the position was not like if he had played something like queen rook d7 the game is still in progress there is nothing like okay arjun has great chances of attack with say knight h5 and gh5 i mean it's going to be a massive massive attack but it's still i mean it's still playable you know like something like knight h5 you try to fight with knight e8 it, it could be that the game is still going on i'm not sure but the moment he took on f5 which is the most natural human uh tendency now the rook is hanging so the rook went back and now arjun played this very calm move bishop e4 he's threatening here here and take this pawn so black had to take and after knight takes black has complete control over this position and he is going to now just switch his rook over here to g3 as we had said it's over actually queen e7 rook g3 and once again if you take here on g because this is hanging so you have to take take check king here and now he took on g6 Bhagat Makijani says, would be impossible to understand these games without your analysis. Thanks, Sagar. Are Bhagat, I, my pleasure that you guys are following this and enjoying this analysis. It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, at some point many years ago, Vidit and I would discuss often that uh, chess needs more people to follow it. And uh, today, close to 7,000 people were watching his game live. Uh, and that's already a great thing. And maybe more people, as the tournament goes on, would join in and watch. And this is something really special for chess, that more people are following it. More people feel anxious, tensed, worried, happy, sad, all these emotions that come along with chess. So that's something that many people didn't expect it before it's also because of so much effort that has been done by so many people around chess so many streamers so many uh, so much has been done and i think it's all come together so thank you all for following by the way knight h6 he took here now the main problem was if you take with the king then knight e6 disco and you lose the rook and if you take with the pawn knight e6 check and you still lose the rook uh, so even after the queen trade, black's position is in a mess. And after knight e4, king f8, because if you take king f7, then there is knight d6 check. So he went king f8 and oof, nice finish. Take, take queen. And now last move, guys. What should white play? How did Arjun? force resignation from his opponent let's have 
200 people at least answer this. Ah, Prague lost. Yes, Prague's position was very bad, so he was going to lose. Sushant Prabhu says, awesome coverage as usual. What is the pairing for tomorrow? Okay, Sushant, let's have a look at pairings for tomorrow so that uh, you all can know what to look for. We know that Vidit is taking on Esipenko. But also let's have a look at other pairings. Okay, maybe it, it will load. But yeah, 9f6 is the correct move. Let's see here. Yeah. Anirudh, V, 253 people already. Mr. Dam, Shaivi Binoj, Anushka Gupta, Rohan Balasubramaniam, Jayant, Saupanyi, Saupayan Roy, Subhash Arvind, Shaunak, Chess Master DG. Fantastic job. And Knight F6 is over. Check here and you take the rook. And with that, Arjun wins. So with this, Arjun moves to two and a half out of three. Sachin Ranade says, chess can spread even more if it made less te technical. Only chess players watch chess unlike a lot of other sports. That is true, Sachin. And I think it's very important to somehow break it down a lot. But also there is a big entry barrier where learning the rules is not easy. So many rules. But people are taking it up, more and more people are watching it, which makes it exciting. Which one do you think has more psychological effect on players? Individual matchups or tournament standings and situation? I think a lot is eased out when you have a good start in a tournament. So when Vidit is on two and a half out of three, he suddenly starts feeling that things are going well for him in this tournament and he will be better. Uh, he will be playing better in the games against some of his tough oppositions like Magnus, Duda, Anish. But if the start is not good, it's very difficult to turn it around. So it a lot depends on your standings. And those like how you're doing in the tournament often makes it easier to face individual opponents. So tomorrow... On 18th of January, that is tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow is six years of Chess Based India as a company. It was incorporated on 18th of January 2016. Uh, and so tomorrow we complete six years. I hope to write a few things about the journey uh, of Chess Based India. Shankland takes on Rapport. Ramesh. Ababu Pragnananda. So Pragnananda takes on Nils Grandelius. Magnus takes on his second Van Forest. Mamediaro versus Duda. Karyakin Anish Vidit Esipenko. Well, it's going to be an exciting game. Fabiano Caruana versus Daniel Dubov. So that's the stand uh, pairing for tomorrow in the Challengers. Uh, sorry, in the Masters. And looking at the challengers, Shushan says, following from 2016, wow, congratulations, Sagar. Thank you. I don't know how many of you uh, were there in 2016 when Chess Base India was launched. Not many. yeah. I don't know if anyone saw this, but VD's performance rating is 3013, says Pratik. Nice. Nice observation. Shridjit Roy, you can go to tatasteelchess.com. That's where you will find. Um, Murzin, uh, so in the challenges tomorrow, Daniel Darda takes on Ar uh, Ganguly. So basically, whatever opponent Arjun faces, next day Ganguly faces them. And uh, Arjun takes on Ruven Vyogal. 
Rowan Vogel and Ganguly takes on Daniel Darda. Pranav Patil says, I am here since 2015. Yes, in 2015, we launched our uh, website and our Facebook page in, I think, somewhere close to the end of 2015. And 2016 is when we incorporated the company. Yes, Sri Ram, I, I hear you. We should have someone else commentating with me. Actually, Amruta was going to commentate today, but then some work came up and also uh, she has some things to do. So she couldn't join in. But yeah, I hear you. We should have someone. Although when I'm alone, you know, I can just shout a lot and I can be more energetic and I can in include all of you more. So that's a different kind of vibe when I commentate alone. And when there's someone, it's a different vibe. I, I think they are both kind of not the same. Yeah, all of you asking where is Samai? Samai is going to come back soon. Maybe within a week or so, he is working on a very amazing video which he said would be launched soon and you guys will see it on his channel. Ganguly game. Let's have a look at Ganguly. He played with Max Warmerdam. So d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, g3. Playing the Catalan, bishop b4, bishop d2, bishop e7. Now can anyone explain to me why do you play a check here? Provoke BD2 and go back. Gurkirat Singh, you joined a little too late. Today was a fun day. Yeah. Misplaced bishop. Yeah, mainly it takes away the square knight d2. Monil Maru, Pranav Chandevar. You are right. The main thing is that um, you force the bishop to come to d2 here. And then you go back so that the knight cannot take this square. So generally what happens is that if you play bishop e7 directly, I go bishop g2, you castle, I castle, and then let's say you play c6, I go queen c2, you go b6, I go knight d2. And then I play e4 kind of immediately. And this is slightly better position for white. Maybe not, but that's the plan. And when you provoke bishop d2 here, and then go back, then it's not so easy to get that. A4 by Surya. And uh, he plays it, plays this line. Interesting line. E3, G5 by Max. Knight D2, Knight F6, F3 goes back. Makes the position quite complicated. In fact, Black is doing very well here. Black could have played B6, Bishop A6. And Black's position look, looks much more cohesive than whites c5 98 f4 and now surya seems to have come back into the game let's see one knight is coming to e5 all the pieces are still on the board after 21 moves nothing has been traded no one is interested in exchanging but first exchange happens then the second exchange And uh, yeah, seems like white has a pretty decent position, but suddenly it's actually wow. He sacked a piece here, bishop b4, rook here, queen g4, he took, took, rook takes e6, rook a6, rook g6, and they agreed to a draw. Oof. Who's better? Because after here, maybe he wanted to play rook takes g4. And then... <laughs> yeah. 
yeah the position is not so clear with white rooks planning to enter it could go either way but yeah in the end they agreed to a draw maybe a bit too soon with both like max having just 30 6 seconds surya i think made a good decision to give a check and offer a draw because if 40 moves had been reached then he might have not accepted the draw here it's maybe slightly better for black sergey resigned yeah so that ends this and let's quickly go to the masters tournament Sipenko, Sergey. No, the game is still going on, but yeah, he will resign soon. Yeah, this game we saw already. Okay. Guys, I think then we call it a night for tonight. We'll meet again tomorrow and maybe I'll come at this time a little early. I came today at 8.40 I believe. Perhaps 8.30 tomorrow. A little early and we'll, we'll focus on, we'll we enjoy this tournament together. Um, tomorrow is six years completed of Chess Base India. So we'll have something interesting as well. I'll try to ask someone to join. Um, Yeah, Mohit Chess says it was a thrilling match between Vidit and Dubov. Uh, tomorrow is Vidit versus Sipenko and Pragnananda against Grandelius, right? What? Yeah, sorry, tomorrow is Pragnananda versus Grandelius. Yeah, so we'll, we'll follow that and until then guys, take care, goodbye and see you all tomorrow. Do write in the comments if you enjoyed and also do follow Chess Base India. Do subscribe if you haven't liked this stream. And thank you all who became members today and who sent in super chats. We had how many members today? We had close to, let me see, it will update and then I'll, I'll go. Oh, bishop c7 is coming in the position nine members today thank you all nine members who became bishop c7 knight c7 rook e7 king f6 rook c7 bishop f5 should be a draw should be a draw for shining okay bye